Welcome to No BS Woodworking. This week on the show, we are gonna start a really special project and we're gonna begin it right here at a really special place. I'm gonna take you inside the home and studio of Wirt Nasherick. Let's go on inside and meet the curator, Paul Eisenhower. Hi, Paul. Hi, Chuck, come on in. So here we are in the entrance of uh, Wharton Esherick's studio, and this is Paul Eisenhower, who is the curator here at the museum. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about what this place is and what you do here? Well, what you, where you are is the started as a sculpting studio for Wharton Esherick. He was uh, born in 1887, died in 1970, and started this building in 1926. And for the next 44 years, it continued to evolve as his art evolved. Um, we are now a museum, and we were, the museum was started by the family. All of them agreed to keep the collection here as Wharton used it and lived it. So you have a, a total sculptural environment. He built the buildings and practically everything inside. So Excellent. you get to explore all the, not just what he did, but kind of his life and the way his mind worked and all of that together. It's, it's a unique place. Well, why don't we uh, move over further into the studio and we'll actually take a, take a look at some of the pieces that he uh, makes. Great. Come on over. This is the, one of the early pieces of Eshrick's. Um, finished this in 1927. Very arts and crafts style drop leaf desk. Excellent. With a leather top. Very nice. Cubby holes. And you see a classic Eshrick thing is he doesn't like knobs. so. A favorite Eshrick drawer pull uh, here. He made this to show or to store and show his woodcut prints. And um, if you look at the form, very medieval looking, typical of the arts and crafts, but he's decorating it with his uh, carving. The underbrush and bark down below, you look up through the winter branches and you see the turkey buzzard circling up above. This is kind of an intermediary stage where he's still thinking too much decoratively right. rather than two pure form. Right, two-dimensionally. Yes. And then we move to, well. Yeah, this, this desk here. A sculptural desk. Is a beautiful piece. And, and this is only two years later. You can see 1929 is when he made the pedestal. But there's two dates here because 1962 is when he put this top on it. The original 1929 top was aluminum. All right, well, we've got one more desk here in, in the main studio room here, and tell us a little bit about it. This one comes from 1958, and he's also got these stops, so the doors only open so far because these rails support the trays that you pull out. So here you've got the desktop. Notice it's made with fir plywood. Wow. You don't have to use beautiful wood to get a beautiful effect. Put satin wood edging and, and, and the tray. the tray in the back is unreal. Mm -hmm. And the only problem with the desk is with the high sides, it tends to block the light. So he put light in. If, if you can't play, why bother? So this has, this has a little of all of it. Excellent. Good. Well, next we're going to take a look at a couple of pieces that are directly related to the coffee table that we're going to make. So we're going to look at a couple of pieces that are directly related to the coffee table that we're going to be building in the rest of the series. And what do we got here, Paul? This is his wagon wheel chair. He made these first in 1931. He had a commission to do a tack room. So this was his first step into the, the bent into wood the thing. the bent wood and the wagon wheel ideas of construction. So then he's also using curved wood on the stretchers oh, down yeah, at right. the bottom. These are sawn out, but this is all steam bent stuff. Now, he, yes. he wasn't steam bending the stuff himself, or this you know, was stuff that he had picked up? Steam, I think this is stuff that he picked up from the, the wagon wheel factory, although he didn't like to steam bend a lot, but when he needed to, he would. Okay. And a number of his pieces do have some steam bent stuff in them, but uh, generally he would rather use a curved piece of wood right. than... than Bended. Well, let's take a look at one of uh, Wharton's most famous sculptures, and then we're going to show you also one of his most successful furniture pieces. 
Well, here we are at one of Wharton Escherich's most famous sculptures. It's a spiral staircase. So what you have is the red oak trunk spiraling upward with the steps cantilevered into the trunk. And all of them cantilever into the same space, same face as it spirals oh, yeah. up. Well, one of, one, of, one of the more exciting parts of my job is we took some steps out one day. And when we took the washer off, there was this gap. And why would you have a gap between a mortise and tenon? And then there were these two saw curves into the tenon. And we scratching our heads trying to figure out why. And then we found some old photographs from the 30s right. where you saw the, the wedge wedges through tenons. Yeah. Uh, really so cool. a little bit of creative re-engineering. And you have a step that is still as tight and strong when you go up it now as, as it was Excellent. Uh, back in 19, 1930. And when it loosens up a little bit, you just tighten it? You just tighten it. That's exactly. really no BS woodworking. Excellent. Well, why don't we go up the stairs and we'll take a look at something that is sort of similar in uh, construction and design, and it is one of his most successful furniture pieces. All right, after you. If I had to pick one piece to sum up Eshrick, this is the piece, his library ladder. He, he loved the spiral. It shows up in so many pieces, the posts of his bed, um, the spiral stairs, and of course this piece. It's wonderful. Yeah. That's great. And he, I think, uh, you know, at this point we're going to head off and we're going to actually take a look at the coffee table these, that we're going to build in the show. Hey, Paul, I want to thank you for having oh, us hey. here today. Thanks for coming. And, uh, Thanks for coming. You know, I'll have to come see the tables when you're done. Excellent. Great. Thanks. And mm -hmm. we'll see you once we get to the coffee table. Welcome to H.L. Chalfont Antiques here outside of Westchester, Pennsylvania. And this is the table that we're going to be building in the series uh, for the show. And you can see, I mean, now that we're out of the Escherich Museum, you can see that it's just a really great, just well-designed and executed piece. We've well, we've made it back here to the shop, and we're also right at the end of the time for the show. So, I have a couple of fellows who are here helping me. We're gonna, they're actually building coffee tables. Um, while we're filming for the show. So next week, what you're going to see is we're going to go through, me and the, the fellows who are here helping, are going to lay out a full-size drawing of that coffee table, just the way we want to do it. Then we're going to jump right into, um, we're going to change the construction of the base a little bit. He used steam bend parts. Well, we're going to go to bent lamination, and it's really simple to do and something you're going to be able to repeat in your shop really easy without all the trouble of going through and building the steam box and doing all that kind of stuff. We may do some steam bending later this year in the show. We'll just have to wait and see what we can fit into the schedule. But we're going to do that layout. We're going to make ourselves, um, you know, some forms to do the bent laminations, and we're going to you know, slice up those veneers and get them bent up and really get this project underway next week. So, you know, until next week, keep the BS out of woodworking. I'm Chuck Bender and I'll see you in the workshop.